hello guys welcome to operation 4.0 online tutorial today we are going to solve a question under foreign exchange markets and our question for today is what happens to the equilibrium income when there is fixed exchange rate regime when there is perfect capital mobility and when there is increase in money supply now, before we start solving the question, I want to just give a brief description about the key points. Now, the first point is fixed exchange rate regime. That is the type of regime where there is complete government intervention in the foreign exchange market. In this market, government sets equilibrium level for the foreign exchange. And if with time there is disequilibrium, the government will re-establish equilibrium. Government does the re-establishment by either selling or buying foreign currency from the domestic market. Now the third, the second concept is our perfect capital mobility. That is one of the slopes of the balance of payment curve. Now, balance of payment curve is a curve that shows the combination of interest rate and income at which the current account and the capital account offsets each other. Now, the balance of payment curve takes three main forms. So, should you be given any question and you see any of these that I'm about to explain, you should know the form and how to draw it. The first one is when the question says there is perfect capital mobility as we have now, it means that your balance of payment curve will be horizontal. When there is perfect capital mobility, the balance of payment curve will be horizontal. The second one is that when there is mobile capital, your balance of payment curve will be flatter. In other words, it will be flatter than the LM curve. And the third one is that when in the question you are told that there is imperfect capital mobility, it means that the slope of your balance of payment curve will be steeper. In other words, it will, the BOP curve will be steeper than the LM curve. So these are the three main slopes of the BOP curve. Now the last concept in the question is about increase in money supply. An increase in money supply is a monetary policy. And for that matter, a component of the LM curve. So, we've gotten a brief description about the main ideas or main concepts in the question. Now, let's start by solving our question. So, what we have to do is, we start with our curve. We start with our curve. So, we draw our X and Y as this well labeled we label the y axis as income. We label the sorry, we label the y axis as interest rate and the x axis as income. Now, the first thing we should know is that there is fixed exchange rate regime and there is capital perfect capital mobility. So the BOP will be horizontal. This are BOP, balance of payment cap. The next thing says there is increase in money supply. So after doing the BOP, we draw we first draw our normal IS and the LM case. And in the question, there is an increase in money supply. And since money supply is a component of LM, the LM curve will shift to the right. So we have LM. One is the arrow indicating the shift. So at let's label the first initial equilibrium E naught. So I'm give us equilibrium income Y naught. Now at point E naught, there is equilibrium at both the domestic and the foreign market. Now, at E-note, 
there is equilibrium at both the domestic and the external or foreign markets in the sense that at point e at point e notes both the bop the lm and the is are equal giving us equilibrium at both the domestic and external market now as a result of the shift of the lm curve the new lm touches the is curve at a certain point let's label it e1 which gives us a income y1 now at point e1 there is domestic equilibrium equilibrium in the domestic market because at point e1 it is the is and the lm that are equal the bop is not part that is why it's giving us domestic equilibrium now we start with the analysis and know what will happen now an increase in money supply in an economy will mean that expenditure will rise expenditure of the people will rise so rising expenditure means increase in demand for both domestic and foreign goods or imported goods now at this same point at e1 we could see that the domestic interest rate is lower than the world interest rate so at point e1 domestic investors or local investors will find it more lucrative to buy foreign assets than investing in the local market and for that matter they will demand more foreign currency which will enable them to invest outside the domestic market and this process will mean that there will be excess demand for foreign currency again at point e1 as a result of the increase in expenditure the demand for imported goods will also rise so we will import more goods and by importing more goods we need more foreign currency to do that transaction so at the end of the day there will be excess demand for foreign currency leading to a shortage or a deficit at e1 and one thing we should all bear in mind is that anytime we are doing the analysis of these scales and the foreign exchange markets when domestic equilibrium is below when domestic equilibrium is below or to the right of the bop there is a deficit of foreign exchange and anytime the domestic equilibrium is above or to the left of the balance of payment curve it implies there is a surplus of foreign exchange so at point e1 it is below the bop and for that matter there is a deficit of foreign currency and i've explained why there is deficit because local investors need more foreign currency to invest outside and importers also need more foreign currency to import goods to supplement excess demand as a result of increase in income locally so what will happen is that the government needs to step in since it is a fixed exchange rate regime so government will try to provide the foreign currencies that the people are demanding for so he will sell foreign currency to the people and take back local currency. So when government sells foreign currency through the central bank, it will take local currency, which will cause the money in the local market to reduce. Therefore, shifting the LM curve back to LM not. So we, we, we could see that at the end of the day, when there, when there is a fixed exchange rate and cap perfect capital mobility and an increase in money supply, the equilibrium income doesn't change. So it presupposes that this monetary 
policy has no effect on equilibrium national income. So, here comes the end of today's tutorial. If you find anything difficult, just go to the comment section, drop your comment, ask questions, and we'll attend to you. We need your comments. Let them come in. Be sending them, and you will attend to them. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed today's lessons. See you another time for more lessons. Bye-bye.